here. <laughs> Xavier Moon, get out of town. Hey, what's going on? My name is Peter Sorellis. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports videography. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I make a basketball mixtape from start to finish for my full-time job with the Canadian Elite Basketball League. I'm gonna show you how I organize my footage, bring it all in to Premiere and label it and sort it out into bins. Then I'm gonna go and make a rough cut with you. We're gonna do some color grading. We're gonna do some sound design. We're gonna add some effects and we're gonna export a final video and by the end of this video, you should know how to go through an entire production process and make a basketball mixtape efficiently and in a way so that you can find all the footage that you've used for later use. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. So let's come into Premiere Pro here. I've already got a project going. You can see that I've got all the footage from this game that I'm cutting the video from right here. So I've got my two cameras, the A6500, and then this is the A7 III. I've got my shots from the 360 camera. And then I've also got my second shooter's footage right in here. So I've made this sequence here called footage call. If you want to make a sequence, you just go where the file, new sequence. And then you could just make one called footage call. And you would just click OK and then you get your sequence for that. So I'm going to take my A6500 clips. I will lay them all right on the timeline. Let's put them on the top here. And now I know these two clips are from post game so i'm just going to drag these to the end because basically what i want to do here is i want to get all the clips in or in chronological order of when they actually happen that way when i'm scrubbing through and trying to find clips everything is in the order that it actually happened in it's easier for me to kind of reference that way so you can see here in these notes i actually took detailed notes of the entire game as i was filming so every single clip that i recorded on my camera i have a what happened in that clip that was notable recorded in order so now i can look at this and reference it and see what is actually in every single file obviously i didn't do this for my second shooter's footage because i wasn't shooting with his camera but for my footage i have this so i know how to put all of my clips in order i know when i switched from my first card to my second card when i was making in-game edits so i can lay everything out appropriately so here i can see that i was on card one from shot 211 until 225 so I'll go to card one We'll grab everything up until 2.25 and I'll lay it right across here. Then from there I switched to card 2 for files 1 through 5 and then I went back to card 1 for the rest of the game. Except for right here. So we'll go card 2, files 1 through 5. I didn't mention it but this is um, the actual finals MVP mix for the CBL that I'm making. So the player who was the MVP of the winning team. I'm making his mixtape right now. Now my camera and everything that I shot from this final game is in order on the timeline. Now I'm just going to grab my second shooter's footage. I will drag all of his footage onto the timeline, just below it, like this. Cool, and at this point, I kind of have this layout that I can use to start looking through my footage. So, let, actually, let me take you into this other software that I have, which I kind of use to reference where certain plays happened. And this is what I'm going to use to assist me while I'm looking through the footage that we've just laid out. So this software right here is called Clip Pro. This is something that the Canadian Elite Basketball League, my employer, went and acquired for us to assist us in our video production. So it allows me to filter through broadcast footage and organize things by player, by type of basket scored, by the rating assigned to a certain play so that I can find the plays that I need for my edit as quickly as possible. So I've selected the championship game here and the player making the edit for is Xavier Moon. So let me search the name Xavier Moon. There we go. And I want all shots made by Xavier Moon to appear in order here during this game that Edmonton won. So now you can see I have the timestamp and the type of shot made as well as a rating assigned to that shot so in the first quarter when the clock was at 504 xavier moon made a two-pointer this is the broadcast footage for that point clip. lead early for edmonton there's xavier moon little up fake wants the drive xavier moon high glass sweet move. now i can download that clip if i'd like and now that i know that in quarter one 
at 5.04 on the clock, Xavier Moon made that basket, I can go into, let's say, my second shooter's footage. I'll mute my stuff and make it not visible. I can go into my second shooter's footage. This may take slightly longer than practical for demonstration purposes, but I can go through here and find 5.04 and quarter one, and then I will have that clip of Xavier Moon ready to go. I can pull it down into the timeline and I can even label it so that I know that it's an Xavier Moon play. So here, now we're at 504 and quarter one. You can see the clip play through my second shooter. So let's say I want to use that one clip of Xavier Moon. We're going to go into sequences. We will copy the footage call. And let's just call this X Moon Plays. We'll open that up. We will delete all of the footage off of X Moon Plays. Let's drag this sequence a little lower so we have like this pancake timeline thing. And then we'll go to the after layout happens. And command K to cut. Drag it up. And we'll bring this onto our X Moon Plays timeline. Now we know we have a layup right there that we can use. I'm going to go here and do this for every single play Xavier Moon had throughout this game, or at least all the good ones that I'd like to use in the edit. And because I have this Clip Pro tool, I can actually look and see which plays I want to use in the edit ahead of time and then go find the respective footage for them. So I'm going to go through and do that for all the plays that I need to make this video. And once that is done, I'll check back in with you and we'll talk about what happens next. <laughs> Alright, so you can see now on my timeline here that I've got all of the clips for the player who I'm making this mix for all laid out. So I've got all the layups that he made organized right here, the jump shots, the three pointers, the one dunk right there. Any assists that I think are noteworthy or could possibly make it into the into the edit because they're kind of fancier, or look kind of cool, or maybe even the commentary was really good and I want to use that little piece of commentary. And then just some miscellaneous B-roll over here. So here, the guy's name is Xavier Moon. There is a fan holding up a sign with an X and a moon on it, so I thought that might be a good little piece to maybe throw into the mix. Yeah, this is my, uh, my second shooter's camera and this is my camera, or cameras rather, completely called. And I've noted a couple timestamps in the footage just as I came across them. So here's the end of the third quarter for my second shooter's camera. Here is the second quarter at the 709 mark in my camera. Just so that I have those notes down in case I ever need to come back to this footage, I can open this project and kind of reference those time frames. But with all of the footage for this player's mix now called, well, and I've got it divided as you can see, so that for every shot I have my second shooter's angle in the light blue and then my angle in the dark blue and the broadcast camera in the violet. So I have these three angles, or maybe more than three angles, depending on if the broadcast showed a replay of every play that I want to use. And this is going to give me plenty of room to work with and plenty of footage to use to make the type of mix that I want to make. So as I was saying, with this all now decided, the next step is to choose some music. So now at this point, I would just go to like a stock footage website, like Artlist or something or Epidemic or whatever. Whatever you have access to, you can use you can even find like easy copyright free stuff on YouTube. Cut it up to be the length that I want this video to be. So looking at this, I'm thinking that I want this video to be about a minute and I can structure it so that I have maybe a couple really enticing shots right at the start, like some quick hitting B-roll shots and some fans yelling. Then I can get right into the scoring and show the player going off. Maybe show a couple of assists in the middle then show two big threes, a dunk, and the final winning basket. That happened all right at the end of the game, which is kind of like the big climax moment. Then for the last 15 seconds of the video, I can show a celebration, and maybe I show Xavier Moon accepting his MVP trophy and holding it up in the air, and that should be it, more or less. I don't think there's much to do after that, and that should tell the story of this player playing in the final game of our season and winning the MVP trophy. So that's my plan. So now I need to find a song that's fast paced. I, I like hip hop music a lot of the time I'm doing these. So I, I would like to find a hip hop song if I can. A fast paced hip hop song that I can cut down to about 60 seconds that has peaks and valleys and is gonna work really well with the edit that I'm trying to make.
All right, so it's now the next day, as you can probably tell from a different colored shirt, and I've got the whole assembly edit together. I picked the music track that I wanted. I kind of went with something that was like a little bit more upbeat, like a happier hip hop song, because this is like a joyous occasion. The finals are over, the MVP won the finals, and there's a big celebration. So I wanted something that was kind of like gonna put people in a good mood and had more of a happy vibe, I guess. So this is the song that I picked. You can hear it right now. And this is what the assembly edit looks like. You can see it down in the bottom of the screen here before I go and do any color correction and add effects and finish it off. So my next step now is to add some effects and color correct this edit. And then I need to cut it for 16 by nine so that we can put it on our proprietary like OTT subscription platform. And then I also need to cut it for socials so that we can post this mix on social media. And that'll be a four by five aspect ratio. And now I have access to a lot of broadcast footage as I showed you before, but in the edit, I didn't actually use a whole ton of broadcast footage. Not that our broadcast footage looks bad because our, our broadcast footage actually looks pretty good. This game was nationally televised on CBC, which is like the big national broadcaster here in Canada. And the footage looks really good, but we did have two DSLRs of the game. The DSLR footage just looks so much better in my opinion than the broadcast footage. So if broadcast has a really good shot and I want to use that shot, like I, I won't hesitate to use it. But because we had two cameras at this game that I already have access to, and there's more that I'll probably get access to later down the line, I don't really need to cut to broadcast for anything. So I've done this whole edit with DSLR footage. And um, actually one thing I should do is I should show you how I've structured my files and laid out my project and stuff. All right, so you can see here in my finder, I've got a few different folders here. So I've got APP, which is where my Premiere project is. I've got audio, which is where I keep music. So there's the song I chose, Angels by Wolf with an X. Um, my sound effects are in a different folder that I just keep on one hard drive and I reference that sound effects folder for every project. I've got documents, I don't know what's in here. Yeah, there's nothing in there. Exports, which is where I'm gonna put folders when I export them. You can see my exports, I've already got all the exports that I made when I was doing in-game edits. And if you don't know what I mean when I'm talking about in-game edits, Go check out the video that's in the top right corner right now. Then I got photos. I didn't use any photos for this, but if I want photos, I can go and download them. And then I got my video folder, which is where all the DSLR clips are stored. So I've got my DSLR clips from my A7 III and my A6500. I've got my footage from my Insta 361 Art to keep mounted on the side of my camera. I've got my second shooter's footage. You can see that I've gone through and labeled all the clips that I'm using in this edit so that I can identify them for later use. And once these get uh, labeled, I like to load them into Adobe Prelude, which is something that I can talk about in a different video. And then WSC is broadcast clips. So you can see that these are the broadcast clips that I downloaded for this edit, and I'm using them for commentary mostly, but if I wanna use the video, I definitely have the option to. And that's basically for how I build out an edit and structure my folders. I'm gonna get working on polishing this edit off, adding the color and effects. Once I have that stuff, kind of in progress and I've developed the theme that I want for this video. I've actually put some effects on so I can show you guys what I've actually done. Then I'm gonna come back here. I'll show you guys how I do some light effects on a quick little edit like this. And I'll cut it for different aspect ratios. We'll send it out and I will show you the final edit. But don't go anywhere yet because we have a little bit more to cover. Many hours later. All right, so we're basically done the edit now. Let me just show you like some of the effects and color grading that I've done here, just so you can see how I finished this thing off. So you see I got my two monitors set up, like there's the actual video. Here's the timeline and other things that we need. So you can see if I click on this adjustment layer and we go to the effects controls, this is the adjustment layer with my color grade on it. So I've used the flat LUT number one from my LUT pack with some tweaks that I made. So if you actually look at the footage here, let's get it to a part where we don't have uh, the motion graphics. I'll turn the LUT off, looks like that. Turn the LUT on, looks like that. So that's the LUT with tweaks. And then this adjustment layer up here, right there, right here, where my cursor is. This one has the effect on it, so I kept it pretty light on effects. I did a VR glow effect where I turned the brightness way down. These values start at one each and I turned them to about half. So let me just show you what that looks like on and off. 
no glow, with glow, pretty subtle. You can see here, no glow, with glow. It doesn't do much, but it's, it's a little bit. And then I did the same thing for chromatic aberration. So I used VR chromatic aberration. These values start at minus 10 and 10. I did minus two and two, just to get a little subtle chromatic aberration. So again, I'll turn it off. There it's off. There it's on. Very small chromatic aberration. You can kind of see that distortion around the edges. It gives it a cool effect. And with these motion graphics here, I actually used a plugin called Premiere Composer, which comes with a whole bunch of motion graphic templates and like presets and things that you can use and customize. So I just added this one motion graphic template for the animation at the top here that says Xavier Moon, and then a second one that comes out the bottom that says CEBL Finals MVP, and I changed the color and stuff for that. So I'll play those through and you can see what that looks like. So that's what the motion graphics templates look like for this. And with color effects and motion graphics, the thing is basically done. I went through and I also should note that I adjusted the volume of the camera audio, which is on this layer audio too. And I adjusted the uh, music here to come a little bit quieter as commentary, which is down here, appears. So that when you play it through, the commentary kind of goes over the cam audio and the music and the music and cam audio are ducking under to accommodate the voice of the commentator so you can actually hear what he's saying. And I did that throughout the whole video. So like right here, I actually grabbed another piece of audio of the crowd yelling and added it to this shot so that the crowd would sound a little bit louder. So when you play that back now, there's the cam audio of the crowd yelling, which is this one. And then there's also additional crowd noise from this, which is from a different clip. So that just kind of like makes the crowd sound louder and makes the whole thing more intense. But um, yeah, that's like the audio for this wasn't too crazy. So I'll, all I need to really do now, cause I have this for 16 by nine, is cut it for four by five for Instagram and then deliver both of those versions and we're done. That's how I do an edit. So here is the final result. Xavier Moon, a little up fake, wants to drive. Xavier Moon, high glass. Sweet move by the MVP. Puts up the shot and drills it. Xavier Moon, unbelievable. Niagara can't secure the ball. Here's Xavier Moon. Are you kidding me? My goodness. That's going to be all for this video. If you liked it, then please make sure to hit the subscribe button because I post videography and video editing tips and tutorial videos similar to this one on a regular basis. And I would love to have you around for that. And if you enjoyed the video, then please make sure to hit the like button because that tells the YouTube algorithm to recommend this video to more people. And the more people see this video, the more people it can help. So I'd really appreciate that. Additionally, if you like the way I color graded this video, then the LUTs that I used actually are for sale on my website, www.peterstorellis.com backslash digital products. That link will be in the description. So if you want to pick up some LUTs to make your basketball videos look cool and support me at the same time, you can go do that at the link in the description below. Anyways, that's going to be all for this video. So until next time, peace.